Hey, what's up, everyone? I'm Shade. Thank you so much for joining me for my podcast, Hidden Alchemy Podcast, where we will be diving into different types of healing modalities, ways to transform oneself, and just tapping into your personal power and becoming your best self. For today's topic, we are diving into my yoga journey and why I decided to become a yogi. And I use the term yogi in those quotations just because I want to make it very clear that my journey is personal for me and it is not a one size fit all. And there are so many different ways of embodying your yoga practice by staying true to who you are. And of course, by following the guides of the eight limbs of yoga, the yoga sutras, the niyamas and the yamas and just following different texts that can help to guide you on your path. However, understanding that there are many different paths that people can take by embodying their practice and just staying true to who they are without feeling guilty or feeling lesser than. So that's why I choose to use the quotations because my journey is not a one size fit all at all. So diving into it, when did I start my yoga journey? My yoga practice began back in 2011. That's when I first took my yoga class at Yoga to the People in New York City, right in the St. Mark's studio. I went with a few friends. I was an undergrad at the time. And we just wanted something to do. It was a Friday night. We wanted something to do before going out to eat and just having fun in the Lower East Side because that was just the area for college kids and just young people at the time, and probably still now, but definitely during that time. And the Yoga to the People studio in St. Mark's was literally right by the six train station and we would just go and we took a class what i loved about this space especially at that time was yoga to the people which is no longer in new york city for reasons that are very just and very fair for the victims and people who have been hurt and harmed through the managers and not all but some of the managers and people at the space However, at the time, Yoga to the People was a studio that was donation-based, and it was the only studio in New York City where you could really have a yoga practice without maybe being financially stable enough to maintain. And if you are a person who takes yoga classes or any type of fitness classes, then you already know that fitness classes, their price can range from now probably 35 and up for a class. So back then it was maybe about $25, $22. But at the time we were college kids and we were just trying to save as much money as we can and still have fun in New York City. So Yoga to the People was the spot for that. And I remember my first class very vividly. It was a packed class in St. Mark's. It was around 7 p.m. And if you've ever been to the St. Mark's studio, you have the brick wall. It's a very old school, or it was a very old school building. And it was a packed class. It was mats on top of mats on top of mats. But there was something about so many people being together in the class and practicing together that you, especially because it was pre-pandemic times, you weren't really, you didn't really mind. You knew what you were getting yourself into when you were taking a class at Yoga to the People that was donation-based. So you didn't really mind. And just practicing with so many bodies, there weren't any mirrors. So you didn't have to pay attention to how you looked in a shape. It was really just about listening to your body and maybe looking around at the other people around you to see, okay, am I doing this shape correctly? Am I about to hurt myself? What is everybody else doing? So for me, it was an amazing experience because I had already been a dancer. I've been dancing since the age of six. I already had had mind body understanding. And what I mean by that is I understood how to maneuver and move my body into certain shapes and stretches and poses because of my prior training and practice from being a dancer for so many years. So I wasn't really intimidated by my first class. However, I was very curious as to, okay, what is this yoga? What is this thing? So my first time ever taking a yoga class, it was more so out of curiosity, out of wanting to try something new and just seeing what yoga was and what everyone was craving about. After I took my first class, I started taking classes here and there. I wasn't really consistent. And then I became consistent in 2013. That was when I was doing research at a university in Ohio and they had a hot yoga space and I needed 
something to work out and move my body and just to have something to do during my downtime. So I signed up for their membership and I started taking yoga classes maybe like two, three times a week. And I really started to enjoy the practice a bit more than I did the first time I took it. And I think I was just probably in a different stage of my life where I wanted to just connect with myself on a different level. Then fast forward to 2014, I moved to China for three and a half years and I'm out living in Asia. And I would say that that was when my practice really deepened. So living in the States, I was able to understand the asana practice. And that's the thing about yoga. Yoga means the yoking or the binding of mind, body, and spirit. So finding ways to connect mind, body, and spirit, yoking them together through the different techniques, such as the eight limbs, the yamas, the niyamas, the yoga sutras. And I'm going to go ahead and break these things down in my yoga foundations class and yoga philosophy. But just for the sake of this video and for this podcast episode, when you say yoga, you are talking about the asana practice, which is the physical shapes that you get into. That's the term. When most people say they're going to a yoga class, that's what they're talking about, the asana practice, when you get into the physical shapes. But there are so many different techniques that you can use to be in a state of yoga, which is the yoking and minding of mind, body, and spirit. So I think that when I first started my yoga class back in 2011, I was just there for the physical aspects of it. Continuing that practice in 2013, the physical practice started to mean a little bit more because I was becoming more consistent and I was beginning to experience things within my body, experience things within my mind during the Shavasana portion that started to pull me further away from just the asana practice, but focusing on how I was feeling in my body. Then fast forward, I moved to China, living in Asia, as I said before. And that was when I really started to deepen the spiritual practice of yoga or the spiritual practice of the asana, as well as moving into pranayama and meditation. While I was living in Asia, I had a teacher who was an Indian teacher, and that was when he helped me to understand that the asana practice is to prepare you for the meditation. And what I had learned was the opposite. Of course, living in the States, I had learned, you know, you do this physical practice, you have two to three minutes of Shavasana and then you're done. But it was actually the reverse. You know, he he was telling me, you don't necessarily have to have an hour and a half long or an hour long Asana practice. You just need something to open up the body, to warm up the spine so that you can really be in a still seat for your meditation. Once I understood that, then I began to shift my perspective a little bit more about my practice. That's when I started to focus more on the meditation aspect. And then I began to dive deeper into the pranayama breathwork aspect. So he was the first guide or the first person that helped me to understand the asana practice is a form of the yoga, but there's so many different limbs, right? Like the eight limbs of yoga. There's so many different aspects to being in complete mind, body, and spirit alignment. That's when my practice started to deepen. I began to look up different ways of meditation, how to meditate. So now moving away from just the asana of yoga, my meditation practice began in 2014. That's when I started to, sorry, not 2014. My meditation practice began in 2016. That was when I started to understand that there was a deeper state of awareness that I can enter into besides just in the asana and actually after the asana practice by just being still and of course the meditation portion i mean it it was a process it was a process i mean now it's 2023 i've been meditating for about 10 years the most consistent for three years straight meditation for me now is like the equivalent of brushing my teeth it's something i do every day on a daily basis And when I'm in my yoga practice, because I meditate so often, it becomes like a moving meditation for me. But that process took time. I remember getting frustrated. I remember just not understanding how to meditate. 
And that's when breath work was introduced. And that's when I started to realize, okay, there are ways of breathing within your body that can help to calm down the mind because you're never going to really be able to completely shut up the mind unless you've been meditating from the age of, of four and you're now a full-blown adult. You're never going to really be able to fully shush the mind. But you learn how to slow the mind down and you learn how to be aware of the thoughts that are coming up, the thoughts that are arriving, but not attaching yourself to those thoughts. And I'm going to dive deeper into that when I talk about my meditation practice in the next podcast episode. But for right now, for the yoga journey, once I understood breath work and I had teachers that helped me through that while I was out in Asia, and then when I moved back to the States, that's when my breath work practice deepened. But understanding breath work and then moving into meditation and then going back to the asana practice, that's how everything started to make a lot more sense to me of, oh, this is a full body feeling experience. It's not just doing the shapes at all. It's really allowing yourself to kind of get lost within yourself to, to just feel and to understand what's showing up and to allow yourself the movement without being distracted by what's going on around you. So, so as I started to develop my spiritual practice while I was out in Asia, when I came back to the States, that's how my yoga practice deepened. So now fast forward to 2017, I'm back in New York and I start working at a Kundalini yoga studio called Golden Bridge. And that yoga studio is also no longer but it played such a huge role on me understanding an even different aspect of yoga, which is the different bodies that we have. So your asana practice helps you with the physical body, but when you start dealing with mantra and you start dealing with breath work and you work with different um, kundalini exercises, you're tapping into the different bodies on top of your physical body that are more in the spiritual aspect. And that just takes your studies to, took my studies to a whole different level. That's when I really began to dive deeper into it. So there's so many layers to anyone's yoga journey. And even though they all start with the asana practice, there's so much more beyond that to discover. And this was all before I even started my teacher training. So this is 2017, 2018. I'm getting, I'm getting more comfortable being back in New York. And I have my part-time job at the Kundalini Yoga Studio where I'm able to meet different teachers and start studying different and start studying a deeper aspect of yoga. Before I was studying what was seen and Kundalini was my gateway into understanding the unseen. Besides astrology, besides numerology, Kundalini started to take things to a a deeper, more profound level of alchemy and transformation because that's how powerful the practice is. I usually tell people, if you are interested in the Kundalini practice, it's something that you have to want to start because once you start and open up certain doors and gateways, it's really hard to backtrack because you are now so open and aware to different things. So once I started my Kundalini practice, that's when I was able to pair the asana and the more physical attributes of yoga and then take it to a deeper level of understanding the the subtleness of the subtle body, which are which is one of the different bodies that we have on top of the physical body. I know this is probably sounding insane, but just stick with me, just stay with it. So that's back in 2018. Now 2019 comes and an opportunity presents itself for me to do a teacher training. I had never thought about becoming a teacher. I was so in love with my practice and with everything that I was learning that I really didn't think to teach. And then 2018, I had this light bulb moment and I was like, oh my gosh, I want to do a teacher training. I want to just I want to try this. I feel ready. And the place that I decided to get my training was at Yoga to the People because I started my practice there back in 2011. And to be back there 2019 doing a teacher training was a full circle moment. And ironically enough, my teacher training was the last summer 
cohort ever for yoga to the people. So everything was in its alignment. Because if I would have waited and doubted and, and said, oh, you know, I don't know how I'm going to be able to afford my training or how I'm going to be able to do it, I would have missed out on that opportunity completely. So 2019 comes around. I do my training at Yoga to the People, which was one of my favorite summers. That training was everything. I absolutely loved my 200-hour training. Again, like I said, I understand Yoga to the People is no longer, and everything that has happened to Yoga to the People, I think is very just and very fair. Nonetheless, my experience that I had there on a personal level was amazing in terms of my training, in terms of the cohort, the people I met that I still talk to to this day. It was a very beautiful experience for me, and it was really the beginning of a whole new journey of, okay, there is so much more out there than even what I have studied before entering into this training. So they are so basically what I'm trying to get at with my yoga journey is every step unraveled a new layer within myself and every layer gets more in depth and more intimate and you just learn about how everything is so interconnected and once you understand that things are interconnected, then you can really start to piece together how to use different aspects to really heal and transform yourself in wherever you are in your journey for whatever you need. 2019 happens, I finish my training and I start teaching immediately after my training at Yoga to the People. And it was great because it gave me an opportunity to practice my practice and then to practice teaching before I put myself out there to other studios and other spaces. My overall reason to becoming a yogi, I don't think it was something that I thought that I was becoming. I think that every time that I discovered something new with my practice, I just fell more and more in love and I just continued to continue. So I never, I don't really know when I became a yogi or why I decided to become a yogi, quote unquote. But I do know that I enjoyed the way that I was feeling after my practice. I enjoyed the way that I was gaining a deeper sense of understanding of myself. Um, the healing journey is not easy. It's a very uncomfortable journey, but it's really powerful and transformative. And that was what kept me going on my journey, was just the ways that I was able to unravel different chapters within myself, different gems and jewels that I really was never aware of before starting my practice. And I just kept digging because I love to research and to dive into things and to understand. I really enjoy the way the yoga practice as a totality. So again, not just the asana practice, but I really enjoy the way that my yoga practice has helped me to uncover things about myself that I would not be able to uncover if I didn't go down that path. And I just love understanding who I am. I love understanding why I do the things that I do. And I love understanding, okay, this might be a habit, but let's go ahead and clean this up. Or, you know, I think it's very important. And I think it's very powerful when you are someone who understands who you are. And when you understand who you are, you understand how to take care of yourself. And when you know how to take care of yourself, then you're a better asset to other people and you're more of service for others. And it's not perfect. It's not linear at all. My yoga journey is far from linear. And I know in the future, it'll be far from linear, but it starts you somewhere. And once you can build that self-awareness, that's the word. My yoga journey has helped me to build better self-awareness, better self-understanding and self undoing because you can understand things about yourself but do you understand how to break down the ego a little bit to undo certain aspects of yourself that might not be that beneficial or productive that's what i really enjoyed about my yoga practice i felt like as a student as a scholar i was a scholar in undergrad i understood the outside world but i didn't understand myself and that was what i was really searching for with yoga and I found that was a deeper understanding of myself, a deeper connection with myself, 
And once you start to understand yourself, you understand the world around you because everything starts with the self. And that has really just been why I continue to go, why I continue to grow in my practice. And it, like I said, it is far from linear and it will never be linear. And I don't want it to be linear. Now that I have been in my yoga journey and my practice for quite some time now, I'm ready to start diving deeper into my teaching and helping other people understand the different modalities of yoga rather than just the asana practice. Because what I have also found is people can feel intimidated if they do not find themselves to be flexible or to be connected to the body. And it goes back to what my teacher taught me when I was in Asia was the asana practice is to prepare you for meditation. It's not for it to be everything or to be the practice. So now I'm getting into teaching the different modalities, getting into teaching yoga philosophy, the foundations of yoga, just so that everyone can feel included in the yoking of mind, body, and spirit. If you don't like a yoga asana class, that's cool. You can still take a meditation. You can still take breath work. You can still read the different texts. You can still volunteer and be in this space. There's so many ways and techniques and modalities that one can take to become a yogi. I think that living out West in the US, the yoga practice is very commercialized. So that's all people see. But there's so much more to the yoga journey, the yoga practice, and becoming your own yogi. So with that being said, I am really looking forward to my future podcast videos where I will dive deeper into breath work, into meditation, and a few of the other limbs, maybe some of the yamas and niyamas. But like I said, go to my YouTube channel and I will have the yoga philosophy as well as the foundations of yoga posted there. All right, everyone, thank you so much for joining me for my podcast episode, my yoga journey and why I became a yogi. Looking forward to tuning in with you all for my next episode.